Hey, what is up guys? Welcome to a Friday video where I get to do pretty much anything I want really. And uh, this morning while I was working on my game, which is about to be released really soon, just a shameless plug like that, I was working with Buttons Animation, and it is the actual first time I opened up the animation grid inside of Unity. And we end up with a result like this, which is quite cool, I believe. It's really simple, but it's quite cool. So right now this is my um, highlight state for the buttons. So I'm just mouse hovering, and then if I click it, it goes back in this kind of state. Then release, this is now highlighted pretty much forever, and if I just click somewhere else, this is not highlighted anymore. And it works for every single button you see here, and all of them at the same time. So guys, that is what we're going to be working on today, and without further ado, let's actually get started. Alright guys, so let's get started right away. Um, as always, I'm going to explain to you what is going on right now, what kind of scene I have. And it's something very simple, I, I basically just created a new scene, added a particle system as you can tell. And it pretty much, the particle system, it just shoots cube, nothing else. And um, yeah, it has directional light, of course my camera set up, I don't have any canvas just yet. And uh, we're gonna get started and try and actually create a menu on top of that. So a menu with button animation. Let's go ahead and do that right away, we're gonna be um, just closing this. And I will right click here, create a new panel. We're gonna start by creating a panel. If you don't have a canvas, it is going to pretty much just, you know, um, do the usual thing. So it's gonna create a canvas and also a event system. Now this panel is pretty much just used for uh, anchoring purpose. It's not really used for, you know, well, the image is not really used basically. So we're gonna be choosing where exactly we want our menu to be. And I'm thinking about, say, something like that. I'm also gonna go on my uh, canvas and just make sure it scales with the screen size. And I'm using a resolution of 800 by 1280 like this. All right, this being done, we can go ahead and just set a margin on each axis. Maybe something like that. We'll have, say, a menu up here, uh, well, some kind of splash, and then button that are animated. All right, I'll call this anchor. We're gonna remove the image in it. Right click, new UI, and we can go ahead and just start with a button. We're gonna start right away by, with buttons. Right, I'll make this stretch, say on this very axis, then say about, um, give it a margin of 50, 50. So you just pretty much just design your button here. Uh, if you already know how, don't really have to follow this part. And say I do have my button right here and this is how it is going to look like. I'm going to remove the menu and now when my button is idle, I have some sprites over here. When my button is idle, I want it to be looking like this one. So it's gonna look like this when it's idle. Now as far as the color it has when it is idle, um, I can go and have, have a look over here. It's gonna be plain black. Well actually some kind of grayish color like that. And for the sake of editing this, I'll just put it in the center really quickly. And this is now where the fun begins. So we're gonna be using the animation tab and also the animator tab. So pull them down over here or pretty much anywhere in your UI. You go on under a window and you just find the animation which is control six and then animator which doesn't really have a keybind. That being said, we are going to open up the animation tab. It's going to ask you to uh, start creating animation for this button. Make sure first your button is selected and then we're gonna, we're gonna hit um, create. So. This is the button I'll be using pretty much anywhere, uh, everywhere in my game. So this is my universal button. I don't really have a name for it other than button, so I'll just, I'll just stick to button, right? Um, the first animation we'll create is called button underscore hiddle. Not hiddle, sorry, idle. And then I'm going to click here, add a new clip. This one is going to be button underscore. Um, let's go in for a highlight or highlighted. Let's create a new one. This is going to be for button underscore um, selected. Well, pretty much all the states you can have. And those, there's also one more state we're going to add that I will be using in my game is button disabled. So we have something of the sort now. Um, all the animation, they don't do anything. They're all you know super simple. So over here, I am on idle. This is a normal button state, nothing else is going on. There's gonna be like text inside of it. Doesn't really matter at this point. But then we have a different, uh, we we'll have a different state, we we'll have different like thing going on when this is highlighted. And let's actually choose that. What exactly could we do different when the button is highlighted? 
Now, um, this state, the highlight state, comes in when you put your cursor on top of it, so when you mouse over that button, and also when you click on it, and it is being selected. So you can click on it, move your mouse away, it's still going to be highlighted. Let's go ahead and just define what is going to be our highlight state. And I'm thinking about something really simple, so maybe just animate the scale a little bit. So right here, I make sure I'm on record, and I'm going to be putting the scale on, say, 0 0.2 in X. So it is going to expand like that when it is highlighted. And as you can tell, we've created keyframes on the very first frame, and that is perfect. We don't need to actually do anything else than that. Unless you want to add something more, so um, when it's highlighted, we can also change the color for a really, really black color like that. And um, as you can tell, it also created a uh, keyframe for that, so for image.color. Now if we go back on idle, we click here, as you can tell, this is our normal state, and this is our highlighted state. Alright, so that's a good start. Let's go for uh, the selected state. And I just realized that I named this wrong. This is not selected, this is press. So I'm going to go down here, change the name for button press. Right, so um, back on my button, we're going to go under button press. Now, um, what we're going to do at this point is we're always starting from this very picture here. We're always starting from this image we have here. This is the idle state. So if we go from highlighted to press, which we will, because to press on the button, you're going to mouse over it. And then if you just mouse over, this is going to increment in size. So at this point, it's going to be on 1.2. And now just to make sure the transition is seamless, I'll actually just put 1.2 in X here. But now I wasn't recording at this point, so I pretty much just messed everything up. Let me turn off the record and put it back on a normal scale. Then record and hit 1.2. Now to show that this is pressed, we can also animate the uh, y-axis, why not? So we're just going to increment the scale again to say 1.4 and put the color on black just like uh, the other animation is. Alright, now finally when it is disabled, what I will be doing when it is disabled is simply change the sprite. You can actually change the image of that and I'll show you how. Of course, all you have to do is click on record, make sure it is recording and simply change it from here. I really love the way it's so easy and I should, I should have learned how to do that before but um, that is going to be my disabled sprite. Now everything is done at this point we have our four animation we gotta be connecting them together. So to connect them together we're gonna first go on our button and inside the button component there is a transition here. This transition you can put it on animation and then you get some triggers. Normal trigger, highlight trigger, press, and also disabled. Um, those are the names generated by Unity. You can actually change them, but I will be leaving it like that. Alright, so the next step is to actually make this work on the animator. So this is the second tab. You're going to open up the second tab, the animator, and then here are all your animation. And this is very simple. I thought this would be like really complicated, but just stick around. This is really simple. So when the game begins, um, N3 actually shows where your button set is going to be. So when the game begins, you're going to be on idle. That seems to be working just fine. I mean, that's, that's what we want. And then we're going to be spreading our buttons animation, something like that. That could work. And we're going to be uh, taking advantage of the any state. So the way we're going to set up this thing is as soon as a trigger is called, so as soon as we go from, uh, say, any trigger to selected or press or highlight, it is going to go to the animation straight away. It's not going to be like taking some weird route. We're going to go from any state and at, at every frame, we're going to check, okay, is there a trigger right now happening? And if there is, we go to that new animation right away, which is good for buttons because it has to be really, really responsive. So the way we do this is, um, let's actually just put that down there. The way we, d we do this is we right click on any state and then we choose which animation to go through. I'll start with idle. So to go from any state to idle, we're going to be putting a condition. The condition is going to be nothing because we don't have any parameters. Oh, I forgot about doing this. 
Um, on the left side over here, you're going to be choosing parameters and then add some new trigger parameter. Now this one, they need to have the exact same name as um, what the button gives us, so right here. So normal, let's add one that is called normal. Let's add the second one that is called highlighted. A third one that is called press. And finally, a fourth one that is called disabled. So we have our fourth trigger as parameter, and they're being called from our button automatically. But now we're going to be setting um, the actual flow of that. So from any state to idle, we need to have a condition that meets normal. Right click on any state, go for the selected, and then um, you actually have to click on the arrow in between those two things, so the link in between them. And the condition to go through that link is um, selected would be it still has a whole name. Well, selected would be pressed in this case. We then make transition. Highlight is, of course, highlight. Disabled is, of course, disabled. Let's actually give this a try inside of the game. So I'm pressing on play right now. As you can tell, we're looping on idle, and that's totally normal because that's, you know, that's the way <laughs> things should be. Now, if I just put my mouse over it, as you can tell, we went from highlight, we went from um, idle, and then the highlight trigger was called, and it just, you know, it highlighted the button. If we move our mouse away, then it goes back to idle. Now, what if I actually press on this? As you can tell, what happened here is uh, we, we were under the uh, selected for a little while, we are under this animation, and then um, it pretty much just selected our button, and now, as you can tell, it stays there because it's the selected button. Now if I click on it and I hold, as you can tell this is now the press state just being played on loop. If I release, we go back to highlight. Even if I move my mouse away because this is the selected button. Now I click away and this is back to idle. Um, and somewhere in my code I could be deciding, well uh, this button is no longer available so I'm going to make it interactable equal to false. As you can tell it just assume the other phase, it just assumed the other um, state here. And I can't click on it anymore, I can't do anything. But it's under the disabled animation. Alright, so now let's actually have a look at this behavior when there's more than one button on the map. Oh, not building. Um, so we're going to take this button we have and we're going to duplicate it right about there. Let's put it here. And that's also how the third one, because why not? So when we hit play here, this is the kind of result we get. So if we just mouse over that, it's highlighting all the buttons. If I just go super quickly, as you can tell, we get this really nice effect, which I really like. And let's actually just choose one. Now this one is selected. And the other one, they work just fine. Then we swap our selection to this guy, or this one. And as you can tell, if I'm holding the click, they just become... Um, they become higher, I guess. Alright, so everything seems to be working just fine here. So if I'm selecting something, as you can tell, everything works and we can just go through all of these. Now, what would be cool is to actually have um, like a real animation going. Right now we're only doing transition. We're transitioning from one state to another, which is, you know, it's cool, it's working fine, but we can also have a little bit of movement going on over time. So that is what we're going to be doing here. Alright, so what we're going to be animating is, we could be animating the scale. We already work with the scale a little bit, as you can tell. This is the, the scale you have when uh, it's full. And when looking at my left side here, yeah, as you can tell, we have some space we can be using. We can actually loop through that. So, um, let's give ourselves, say, a one minute animation. So we're going to be clicking here at one. Double click, so it actually sets a keyframe to make sure that we have the same thing going on, like the first keyframe and the last one should be the same. So right now we make sure that the first and last is basically just the same thing. And we're going to be putting something in the middle, so say at 0 0.30 or 0 0.5, which is 30 seconds. Uh, I mean, half of a second. <laughs> Alright, so um, here is what we're going to do. We're, we're simply going to increment the scale by say 1.4, and this way, 
whenever we are in that in animation state, it is going to grow, then shrink, and then grow and shrinks, and so on. Let's play that, see if it works. Isn't that wonderful? It's really as simple as that. But now, I mean, kind of look weird because you can have two selections at once. But I really like the way they're not playing on the same, um, you know, they're not playing on the same frame, and that is totally perfect. Alright, I don't know if you have a look at the animation. As you can tell, when it shrinks back, it just, it's really, really choppy, and I don't necessarily like that. So what I will be doing is I'll be playing with the curves. And if you have not played with animations before, you can actually do curves in Unity, which I was actually impressed. And um, yeah, so you know, I've just opened this up like for the first time this morning. Having a good time so far. Alright, um, you have curves down here. And you can actually have a look at your animation. And here it is, that's our animation um, from pretty much the scale in X. This is where it gets choppy. As you can tell, now this grows and it shrinks super smoothly, but this over here, it just go from one to another and that's too choppy. So if we right click on that, have a free smooth, not a free smooth, sorry, a flat on this side. Oh, it actually just flattened out this very left side, but now as for the right side, we gotta go back to the beginning, I believe. So we're gonna go here and do a flat. And here we go with a really smooth curve and it should be replicated in the game as well. There we go. All right, guys, so that's going to be pretty much it for my Friday quick tutorial on making buttons animation, which is really more fun than I thought would be. And um, I'm gonna definitely gonna be using this for my next game, this game. And there is a lot of UI in it, so that's definitely something that um, I need to improve. So, with this that I've learned this morning, then um, I can actually do that. I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope you learned something, and if you did, please leave me a like. I really appreciate that. And also check out the Patreon page if you wish to support me, that would be amazing. Uh, your support thus far has been just great. And we... We're, this channel is almost one year old, and we're almost at 6,000 subscribers, so I think that is pretty cool. And I thank you a lot for that. Really appreciate all the helps and all the comments you guys leave. Talking about comment, you can leave your question or comment in the, the, in the um, section below. Comment section below. And also on the Facebook, all the links I've mentioned are down there in the description below. And uh, you can of course check them out. That would be great. And I will see you guys in the next episode.